CBB is what we would like to aim for. It is the gold. Okay. Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Zaz and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we're gonna do a video that I've never actually done before. And I was kind of searching through and looking to see if this video has ever been done before. And I saw one kind of similar by Snake Discovery a few years ago about breeding codes, but I couldn't find a specific video. So here we go. We're gonna be talking all about the terminology used by reptile keepers. Since my channel is geared towards beginner reptile keepers, I just wanted to help you guys out that may have no idea what's being talked about about what's being said what's going on because beginner to reptiles means that you're also a beginner to the terminology being used so here we are if you are looking for a specific word I, as always, will have timestamps in the description and little chapters down at the bottom of this video so you can kind of click around and see if there's anything that you are specifically looking for. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by iHeartGecko, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out all about this awesome company. Let's get started. The first one is one of the most common words you're going to hear all the time about so many different kinds of reptiles, and that is a morph. What a morph is, simply, is just the color more in depth it is how the animals bred the genes that are in that animal that make up the way that it looks the patterns all of that and depending on what kind of animal we're talking about there's going to be so many different names way too many to list here but you're looking at things like a banana ball python an albino leopard gecko those are all morphs of that animal since we're talking about morphs, let's talk about the code that you may see if you're trying to buy an animal from a breeder. Usually it's going to be things like this person is selling normal ball pythons and it'll say like 1.2 or 1.2.2. These numbers are very confusing at first. They are very overwhelming and if you are going into animals, it's you have no idea what's happening. So super easy. All that is is shorthand for how many males, how many females, and how many unsexed animals they have of that morph. So if it says 1.2.2, they have one male, two females, and two unsexed of that specific morph of that specific animal. A lot of times they'll just have the two numbers, males and females, and it's just that. It's always in that same order. It's always male.female.unsexed always so yeah it looks a lot more confusing than it actually is gut loading i get a lot of questions about gut loading and what exactly that means anytime I mentioned in other videos gut loading is simply feeding your feeders i have videos on gut loading what that means that i will leave here i think it's just feeding your feeders nutritious food at least 24 hours before you feed it to your animals so if zaz here is eating doobie roaches i'm going to make sure that those doobie roaches have been fed they are in a bigger container than what they were shipped in with food bowls and water bowls and they are constantly eating before feeding her. That's just making sure that you are giving your animal the most nutritious of bugs possible. UVB lighting. This is something I get a lot of questions on as to whether or not this and a heat light are the same thing. No, they are two different things. A UVB light is a light used for your diurnal animals that's basically going to mimic the sun. It is a means of your animal getting vitamin D3 and properly metabolizing the calcium that they are intaking. These lights put off very little heat, but UVB light is there solely for the purpose of replicating sunlight and it will need to be supplemented with another heat source if your animal needs heat. Speaking of UVB, the next thing we're going to talk about is MBD. MBD stands for metabolic bone disease. Metabolic bone disease is a very common occurrence in highly kept animals like bearded dragons, leopard geckos, and basically this just happens when your animal is not given the proper amounts of calcium or vitamin D3. It causes basically their bones to soften, their joints to weaken, it can cause deformities, kinks in the spine, kinks in the tail. It is a absolutely terrible illness. It takes a long time to treat this illness and it is something that we want to avoid at all costs. Thermostat versus thermometer. This is something that gets very confusing for new keepers and it is a question I get often. A thermometer is something that is going to measure the temperature in the tank. It can be a temperature gun. This is a form of thermometer. It can be a stick on thermometer, but it doesn't affect anything. It just simply tells you what the temperature is in that tank. A thermostat is something that's going to regulate the temperature in that tank. So when someone says that your heat pad needs to be on a thermostat, that doesn't mean that you just need to have a thermometer in the tank to measure the temperature. It means you need to have a thermostat in the tank so that your heat pad is cutting on and off appropriately and not becoming a danger to that animal. WC. 
This abbreviation you will see on things at reptile shows or sometimes online sellers will use this. This means wild caught. This means that the animal that you are looking at was gathered in the wild and then sold to you. Wild caught animals are often looked down upon in the reptile world simply because they are imported from other countries, oftentimes illegally, and then they are sold to the public without letting people know they're wild caught. And these animals almost always have parasites and almost always have to be taken to the vet to be treated for parasites. And a lot of wild caught animals like green tree snakes just don't normally survive in captivity. So make sure to keep an eye out for those letters WC when you are buying a new animal. On the opposite side of that, we have CB versus CBB. CBB is what we would like to aim for. It is the gold standard of reptiles. These are usually pretty healthy reptiles, a lot healthier than wild caught. CBB means captive born and bred. That means that that animal was bred in captivity and it was born in captivity. Alternatively, you may see CB. This is not the same thing as CBB. This just means that your animal was born in captivity, not bred in captivity. CB usually means wild caught animals were brought in and some of them are pregnant. This is very normal. And all CB means is that that wild caught animal had her babies in captivity. So normally, especially if you are a beginner to all this, you want to look for CBB on reptiles when you're gonna buy them. Speaking of reptiles having babies, let's talk about what it means to be gravid. Gravid simply means that your reptile has eggs. It doesn't necessarily mean she's gonna have babies. It doesn't necessarily mean that she's been bred or has ever been in contact with a male ever. A lot of female reptiles will become gravid without ever being in contact with a male reptile in their entire lives, and this is normal. If your female has been around a male, she was bred with him, and she lays those eggs, that group of eggs is the definition of a clutch. You will often see when you go to buy reptiles from breeders that they'll say that these were clutch mates. That just means that they were hatched from the same laying of the same grouping of eggs. Sometimes if your female is gravid and she does not have a safe and comfortable place to have those eggs, this is super prevalent with your dragons, they can develop something called egg binding or egg calcification. This just means that they refuse to lay their eggs and they get stuck in their bodies. This causes a whole mess of problems that happen to Zaz. And basically it has to be resolved with surgery. They have to remove all of it. That's why if you have a female adult lizard, it is very important to have a lay box. If you have a female adult, any kind of reptile, it is important to look in to this animal and there's something else and find out all of the information that you need to about that animal before you get them. Temperature sexing. This is actually super cool and interesting. When we look at animals like the leopard gecko, whether or not they are born male or female depends on the temperature that the eggs were incubated in. And incubation is just the temperature control of the eggs in order to allow it to hatch in the wild. This is done by the animal just laying on top of the eggs or burying the eggs or whatever. But leopard geckos are really cool because their male versus female is based on what temperature that clutch was incubated at. And that'll give you males and females. I don't believe that it's a 100% but it's pretty close. So if you go to buy a leopard gecko and it says temperature sexed female, that just means that that incubation chamber was kept at the temperature that a female would need to be at to be hatched. Usually it's pretty reliable. Invasive reptiles. Invasive reptiles are going to be talked a lot about in more tropical climates like Florida. Basically an invasive reptile is a reptile that has found its way into an environment that is not its natural habitat and it has been able to thrive there and this is very bad for the ecosystem because now they are eating animals they're not supposed to be eating. They are being eaten by animals that are not supposed to be eating them and it just throws off the entirety of that ecosystem. This is one of the biggest reasons that you should never ever ever release your reptiles into the wild. F slash T. This is something that is going most of the time referred to frozen thawed rodents for snakes. This is usually in captivity, one of the preferred ways of feeding snakes. I know in other countries it is illegal and seen as animal abuse to feed your snakes live rodents. So frozen thawed rodents are usually the way to go. Frozen thawed is just what it sounds like. That rodent has been previously killed, it has been frozen, and then you're going to thaw it out in order to feed it to your snake. Puppy dog tame. This is such an adorable term. And usually it is used to refer to bigger reptiles like pegus or monitors or 
anacondas. They refer to those animals as puppy dog tame, which is just what it sounds like. They are just saying this giant animal is not a threat. They are as tame as a puppy dog. Stargazing. Stargazing is a symptom of a couple different very serious illnesses in mostly lizards. You're going to see it often in things like bearded dragons, leopard geckos. They are going to gaze up at the stars. Now this isn't going to be them just looking up. It is where the entirety of their backs will arch. I don't know if you can see this. Their entire of the backs will arch and they will be at almost a 90 degree angle, stretching their legs up and looking directly up. This means that something is wrong with that animal and they need to see a vet. Most of the time bearded dragons, that is a huge symbol of adenovirus, which is an untreatable, pretty serious disease in bearded dragons that causes them to basically slowly waste away. Bioactive setups. Bioactive setups are something you're going to hear a lot about in the reptile keeping world. I love bioactive setups. I talk about them a lot. A bioactive setup is basically a tiny little ecosystem in a tank. It has natural soils. It has real plants. It has a cleanup crew, usually consisting of things like springtails or isopods or mealworm beetles, anything like that, that are going to clean up the waste of your animal and the waste of those plants. And there's a lot of beneficial bacteria in the soil as well. So this tank acts just like a piece of a forest. The waste and things like that generally aren't going to need to be cleaned all the time. The plants drop leaves, your animal produces waste. Those two waste products are broken down by the beneficial bacteria in the soil and by the cleanup crew and it is going to be turned into fertilizer for the plants and it's just a giant system. They're fantastic. Highly recommend trying them eventually. And the last one is new pet quarantine. This is something you'll hear people talk a lot about especially if they have a lot of reptiles. New pet quarantine is basically when you get a new reptile not putting them on a shelf right next to all your other reptiles. It is setting up a brand new tank that usually is pretty bare for your animal away from all the other animals. This allows number one if your animal has any kind of external parasites they won't travel to your other tank and infect your other animals and it also makes it easier to collect fecal samples to take to vet to have them initially parasite tested. It makes it easier to check and see how that animal is pooping, make sure it looks healthy, make sure that they're eating. It just makes it easier for you to make sure that everything is okay with your animal to begin with and also prevents your other animals from potentially being infected with external parasites. But that is it. That is all I have for this week. That is all of the terms that came to mind when I was thinking about terms that I was completely lost on when I first got my animals. So hopefully it helps you out. If you have any other terms that you would like to add, make sure to do that in the description because you might help someone else out in the future. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is an awesome company that makes conversion kits for tanks to turn any old aquarium that you may have laying around into a front opening tank for your animal. Front opening tanks are awesome because they make your animal feel more safe. You're reaching in at them and not down at them to take them out like a natural predator would and it makes them feel safe. Also, they look super cool. I've had mine set up for a long time now and it is still doing wonderfully. The plants are growing. Everything is fan. I highly recommend getting one of these if you are wanting to turn an old glass tank into a tank for maybe a crested gecko or something. Highly recommend this company. If you do order from them, make sure to leave Elle's Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box so that way they know you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to Geckos for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my social and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every time I have a new video to Thursday, Sunday, and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is for L Salter. I Salter. 791, I don't know, for <laughs> following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. And this week's subscriber shout out is for angelface 914 commenting on last week's video. Thank you guys both so much. You are at the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Here to dragon. A... Um, measure the temperature in the tank. It can be a heat rate. It can be a... So make sure to keep an eye out on, so make sure to keep an eye out for those let, so make sure to keep an eye Yes, okay. Okay. And when they lay those, and if your reptile, and, and if you're, basically, no. You're making me nervous. Well, let's go. You're gonna get on the other shoulder. If it was bred and she births and she has those eggs, lays.
whether or not they are born whether they are born male or female usually depends on um, whether or not they are born male or female most of the time depends on whether or not usually <laughs> as always if you're not already please feel free to follow me as always